Welcome to the Energy Converters Introduction Lesson. So in this part, we will be talking about energy converters and a little bit of calculus that goes with them. And uh, okay, so before we get into types of converters, let's ask the question, what are energy converters? So the, the name implies that they convert something. So energy converters are components in our hydraulic systems uh, that convert mechanical energy into fluid flow energy or vice versa. And what that basically means is that we have pumps and hydraulic motors. So pumps and hydraulic motors are our energy converters. So here you can see that pumps are the converters that convert mechanical energy into fluid flow energy and hydraulic motors are the converters that convert fluid flow energy into mechanical energy. Uh, pumps are usually in the beginning of our system. So they're right after the, the right after the electric motor that's driving our pump and uh, hydraulic motors are usually at the end of our system doing some kind of work through a hydraulic cylinder actuator or hydraulic motor of some sort. Okay, so this is a classic um, picture of a gear pump of an energy converter that converts mechanical energy into fluid flow energy. So this is where we couple uh, the electric motor to the shaft of this uh, gear pump and this is where we connect our inlet and on the other side it's the outlet ports for our fluid flow. So we mostly use positive displacement pumps when we talk about energy converters and positive displacement pumps basically work, uh, they change volume and by changing the volume uh, the work volume, they convert the energy. I'm going to show this um, in an example. So how can you lo locate the energy converter in the system? So as we said, pumps are usually at the start of our system. They are usually linked directly to the motor, electric motor, or they have some kind of coupling between them. Um, maybe, maybe some kind of torque converter, uh, but they are usually directly con connected to the AC motor. So here we can see uh, the the pump. Um, and uh, okay, this is a simple system as well. And here we can see coupling uh, between uh, the pump and the motor. On the right side, that, that's, that's our electric motor. And on the left side, we have our pump. And by the enclosement, enclosure of this pump, I, I will say that this is probably a, a gear pump. Okay, so how do energy converters work? So this is a classic representation of a piston pump. Okay, so let's talk about the parts of a piston pump. So. Um, before before we start, let's 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 say that this is, for example, a reservoir one, and this is the reservoir two. And our task is to move the the fluid from reservoir one to fluid uh, to to the reservoir two. So we want this fluid to go up. And obviously, we have to ha have some work involved because uh, the reservoir one is lower than reservoir two. So there's a there's a difference in potential energy that we have to overcome. So let's talk about the parts. The, 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 I say the most important uh, part of a piston pump is the piston, okay? Because that's the element that suppresses our fluid. That's the element that moves left and right. And uh, the piston gets its power from the crankshaft of the piston pump. And the crankshaft is usually connected uh, let's let's draw a little electric motor here. So it's usually connected to an electric motor or an outside source of energy uh, that spins it, and the crankshaft delivers. Uh, it converts uh, rotary motion to linear, 
and uh, basically makes our piston go left and right as you can see here. On the left side we can see the suction part, suction pipeline and the discharge pipeline as well as suction valve and discharge valve. So the crosshead is basically uh, this part here, it's basically how, uh, it's basically the area of our cylinder here. And uh, okay, so let's talk about how, how does it move the fluid. So this reservoir and this reservoir, they are open reservoirs. And that basically means that they are in touch with the atmospheric pressure that they are connected to the outside world and uh, when this piston moves all right the the work volume the work displacement expands and uh, if it expands the pressure lowers okay so we have a lower pressure when the piston is on the right side and while the pressure is lower it is lower than the atmospheric pressure so the atmospheric pressure forces the fluid the liquid through the pipeline and forces it into the work volume here so uh, when when the piston is right the pressure in our in our work uh, displacement in our work volume the pressure is smaller than the atmospheric pressure okay so this is when the piston is on the right side and when it fills with liquid, uh, the piston starts moving left and the volume lowers. While the volume lowers, the pressure rises. And when the piston comes to the maximum left side, when it comes to the, to the most left position, the pressure is going to be bigger uh, than the atmospheric pressure. So when, when it comes to the left side, it's gonna be bigger than the atmospheric pressure and what that means basically is that the pressure from here will drive the liquid up through the reservoir too and these two these two valves they basically uh, control as you can see uh, the discharge valve opens when the fluid pushes uh, the fluid pressure pushes it up and the fluid can move upwards uh, because you know with with gravity fluid can can always come back so uh, we use those two valves to control our flow so we saw how these converters work and uh, we are gonna divide uh, displacement pumps uh, into a couple of groups so we divide um, our positive displacement pumps uh, by the movement of the suppressing element and as we saw in this example uh, the suppressing element is the piston right let me go back so the piston is is the element that forces the fluid that forces the, the, the liquid in and out so we divide energy converters uh, actually the what we sell positive displacement pumps um, by how the suppressing element moves okay so um, we saw that in our in our previous example that our suppressing element is a piston but it doesn't have to be only the, a piston so it can be a plunger a worm screw a rotor gear uh, as we saw in our gear pumps so let's let's divide our positive displacement pumps by how their suppressing element moves Okay, so we can divide positive displacement pumps into three, three big groups. So the first group is the rotary type, reciprocating type, group number two, and linear type, group number three. So rotary type says that we have rotary motion, rotation, reciprocating type means that we have uh, reciprocating uh, motion, and linear type it means that it's moving linear but in one direction, it's not oscillating left and right or up and down like the reciprocating type so rotary type we we already talked a little bit about gear pumps and we also have screw pumps and rotary vein pumps we're gonna show some pictures in the later slides 
we got reciprocating types, uh, the plunger pump, the piston pump, the diaphragm pump, and the circumferential piston pump. And we have a little difference here between piston pumps and plunger pumps. As you can see, plungers, this is a plunger, and this is a piston with a piston rod. And as you can see, the, the plunger is a little bit il elongated, elongated, and it, it doesn't cover the whole sectional area of the cylinder. It leaves a little bit of space uh, in between to, to, to make fluid flow. And uh, the last type of uh, positive displacement pumps are linear types. And these kind of pumps are not used in hydraulics. Um, they're inefficient and slow and basically they are used to extract water from, from under underground wells. I'm gonna show a picture of a rope pump and a chain pump in the later slides. So we talked about rotary pumps uh, earlier. Actually, we talked about gear pumps. And uh, so gear pumps, we said like we have the inlet side, the outlet side and the gears that spin. I already explained this and the, the screw pumps that we talked about use uh, worm screws inside to push to draw in liquid and to push it out so you can see here that liquid uh, the fluid is drawn in between the threads of, of this uh, worm screw and uh, it is being transported and pushed out at the outlet and um, this is a double suction screw pump and uh, rotor vein pumps are basically uh, devices that uh, have an eccentric shaft that spins around and uh, in this way you can see it delivers the fluid to the outlet. So in Hydraulics 102 we're gonna talk more about types of pumps and how they work in deep. This is just uh, like basic coverage of the pumps. And uh, okay, so let's get to reciprocating pumps. This is a reciprocating plunger pump in the picture. So you can see that on one side we have the crankshaft that is uh, moving the plungers and uh, on this side we have the ports for our liquids, uh, for our fluids to go in and out. This is an animation of a uh, packed plunger pump with splash lubrication and uh, this is basically oil that lubricates the moving parts of uh, the pump and when we said linear pumps I said that they are not used in hydraulics we usually use them for water irrigation and for extracting water from underground wells as you can see the this part spins and you have elements on, on a rope that push water up. So you're spinning this, this crank and um, the elements are going in this direction. They're going up, the fluid is be being poured out, usually water, and it goes back into the loop. So it's a closed loop. Um, this is not very good because sometimes, you know, it, these these pumps can get stuck, or you can have problems with them, and um, they're just not good for hydraulic systems that work with high pressure and high, uh, high speeds, high RPM. So, in our next lesson, we're going to talk about properties of energy converters, and... Uh, because energy converters are the converters of energy, we have to talk a little about the energy indicators and the properties which affect energy, which are uh, flow, uh, power, torque or force, if it's a linear moving hydraulic motor or pump, and efficiency. So thank you so much for listening and for being focused. So we're going to cover some, some basic math behind these uh, energy properties and we're going to explain them a little bit better. See you in the next lesson.